This June 20th is World Refugee Day and I wanted to tell you a bit about the work of IID on refugees. You might not associate IID with refugee populations but actually there's quite a bit of overlap with the work of particularly the Human Settlements Group. There's an assumption that refugees live in refugee camps in remote areas but actually more than half of all refugees, around 60%, are living in towns and cities and only a small minority are in camps. Um, and there are lots of reasons for this. One perhaps the most important reason that, is that many refugees were already living in towns and cities before they were forced to flee because of conflict. Uh, IID recently held a workshop in Kampala. Um, Uganda is, a, is home to, to millions of refugees, the largest refugee population in Africa, and a percentage of those refugees are living in the capital city. We spoke there with a refugee from the Democratic Republic of Congo who explained that when he arrived in Uganda he was offered a plot of land and some agricultural tools on the, on the border region and he said to us, why would I do that? I've never even seen a hoe before, I wouldn't know what to do with it. So it's clear that refugees want to live in urban areas. There's basically there, there's the opportunity to live a life with dignity um, and with hope and aspiration for themselves and, and for their children. There's opportunities for education, there's better health care and opportunities to earn a living. In Uganda, refugees are allowed to live outside of camps and can move to towns and cities. But in many countries, there's an encampment policy, which means that legally refugees are supposed to stay in the camps. Even in countries where you can move freely, refugees may not receive any assistance at all when they get to the capital city or, a, or another town. This is partly because humanitarian agencies are not used to delivering assistance in towns and cities. It's a lot more complicated than giving food or shelter or healthcare in a camp where there's a clear understanding of who is a refugee and who isn't. And there are also a number of barriers that refugees face to accessing decent healthcare and decent um, basic services. So IID recently did some research with refugees in Nairobi and in Kampala where it was found there was quite a lot of discrimination towards refugees trying to get access to healthcare. There's also a language barrier, requests for bribes, and also a real lack of understanding on the part of healthcare providers of the types of documentations that refugees held that proved they were eligible for healthcare. IID's Human Settlement Group has, over the past years, looked at processes of urbanisation, so how towns and cities are growing as countries become more urban, and at issues of urban poverty and how low-income groups access basic services. With the numbers of people who are displaced within their own countries and crossing borders of refugees and the fact that they're moving into towns and cities, we've realised that increasingly displacement is part of that urban picture. And to understand how to promote sustainable urban development, we need to understand how displaced people are living in urban areas and experiencing life there. One positive thing to note is that mayors around the world are recognising that not only is there a moral case for hosting displaced people in towns and cities, there's also a social and economic case for providing a welcoming environment for people who've been displaced by conflict, by natural disasters, or increasingly by climate change. So IID is working with mayors, local communities, service providers, and refugee organisations themselves to see if we can come up with some win-win solutions that provide that welcoming, productive, and safe environment for displaced people.